This news update is brought to you by. Whoa, I'm happy. No, I'm gonna take my time. I'm happy. Enjoying myself with lime. I'm happy. Escape from reality. Yay. And let lime take care of me. Whoa, whoa, we're just happy and smiling. Doing almost. Having fun and just living. Whoa, whoa, shopping, chilling, everything. Get happy with Barbados's largest and fastest 4G network. Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today. This is the Barbados Today Morning News Update for Friday, October the 31st, 2014. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Confronted by what Chief Executive Officer Dr. Dexter James describes as a crisis at the Accident and Emergency Department of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, authorities there are working on a fast-track system that could take some of the pressure off the overwhelmed A&E. Dr. James tells Barbados today the proposed new system would benefit non-emergency patients who need diagnostic investigation that's not available at the polyclinics. However, he is appealing to all other patients with non-urgent or non-life-threatening conditions to stay away from the A and E. We have we have seen increased numbers of the accidents in the emergency department, and therefore we're going to be issuing a press release very shortly to ask persons with non-urgent care to please refrain from coming to the accidents in the emergency department. It has been so for almost two months now, and it's becoming worse. We see about 125 to 140, 50 patients a day, and this is this is so uh, many of them are non-urgent cases, and we're asking them to go to the polyclinics or go to the uh, the private sector doctors because uh, it creates problems for us. And as tensions fluctuate between the National Union of Public Workers and the Barbados Community College amid concerns over contentious new contracts and possible staff retrenchments, the BCC management says it's still waiting on the NUPWU to respond to its request to negotiate. In a paid release published yesterday, college principal Dr. Gladstone Bess also questioned whether the NUPW was the official bargaining agent for staff at the college. Dr. Best said the union has not provided any evidence that it's the true representative organization. The BCC head also described as false claims by the NUPW General Secretary Dennis Clark that the union's officials had been prevented from entering the college's auditorium when they went to meet with workers last Wednesday. Dr. Best explained that management had given the union permission to use the auditorium during the afternoon instead of the morning as had been requested by the union. In sports, with a record $12,000 winner-takes-it-all purse in store, the second edition of the Massey United Insurance Clash of the Titans Road Tennis Competition smashes off at the Villages at Coverley Christ Church on November the 9th. The contest, which climaxes on Independence Day, that's November the 30th, will attract 64 players, and that's double the number from last year. Mark Venom Griffith will defend his crown while the veteran Anthony Black Dog Riches returns to competition after years off the court. President of the Professional Road Tennis Association of Barbados, Dale Clark, says this year a new system of assessing players will be added. For the first time, road tennis history have a comprehensive ranking system where the top 45 players that played in the last clash of the Titans and the Morris tournament they have been ranked. We have applied the ATP ranking system to it, and I will email each of you all the documents so you can go through it. Um, currently, Mr. Griffith here is ranked number one, and Mr. Daniel is ranked number two. It is regional and international news after this short break. The Barbados Food and Wine and Rum Festival, November 20th to 23rd. Taste the culinary delights of top local and international chefs like Marcus Samuelson, Anne Burrell, Tyler Florence, Roger Mooking, Michael Hines, Dane Sadler, Daphne's Restaurant, and more. The Barbados Food and Wine and Rum Festival, 5th edition, November 20th to 23rd. Visit foodwinerum.com or contact Premier Event Services, Inc. at 435-0670. Get your tickets now at Wine World or Ticket. 
Welcome back with news from the region that there seems to be a glimmer, and that's just a glimmer of hope, that the president of Trinidad and Tobago, Anthony Carmona, could intervene in the hunger strike by environmentalist Dr. Wayne Kubel Singh. A skin and bones Kubel Singh, now into his 45th day of starving himself, is trying to pressure Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissessar to reroute a major highway extension project. The Prime Minister has already made it clear she is not doing any such thing. Now, a group of young people calling themselves Project 40 is optimistic that President Carmona's acknowledgement of a letter to him seeking his intervention shows that a positive outcome can still be achieved. A statement from the group said the fact that Carmona accepted the letter was an important step in establishing invaluable lines of communication on the matter. On the international scene, President Barack Obama found himself in a rather awkward situation at the voting booth in Chicago on Monday. As he was casting his ballot, a young man walked by and warned him, don't touch my girlfriend. The girlfriend, Ia Cooper, apologized for her boyfriend's remarks, but as the video shows, President Obama imagined how she would retell the encounter later in the day. <laughs> I really wasn't planning on it. I am and, sorry. Uh, Please excuse me. Now, there's, there's an example of a brother just, just embarrassing you for no reason. It's embarrassing. Just for no say, reason whatsoever. I knew he was going to say something smart, but you know, I didn't know what he's going to say. And now, you'll be going back home talking to your friends about it. I can't believe it. What's his name? Mike. I, I can't believe Mike. He is such a fool. He really is. He really is. Oh, I was just mortified. <laughs> She's having, she's having a conversation with the president. Fortunately, the president was nice about it. I was freaking out right now. <laughs> and, you know, so it's all right. Thank you so much. That's right. Mike seems like a decent guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a decent guy. He's a decent guy. This is not happening. This is really happening. Okay, you, you're going to kiss him and give him something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of yourself. Really <laughs> <laughs> See you, everybody. And finally, this story. There may be hope yet for some women, and men for that matter, who are well advanced in age to produce children. As we hear in this BBC report from Diva Arya, women of 60 and 70 in India are becoming mothers for the first time. Like many children, five-year-old Naveen likes to play, dress in nice clothes, and get her mom's attention. But at 75, Rajo Devi can't run around after her long-awaited daughter. She says living without a child was life in darkness. Only a child could bring light. She was shunned by her family for not being able to get pregnant. Villagers didn't want to see her face because she was infertile, she says. Her husband's brothers looked down on her and said hurtful things. So when Rajo was 70 and her husband 73, they took their life savings of about $5,000 to a private fertility clinic. And Naveen was born. And that's our Barbados Today morning news update. We will be back again this afternoon. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also, tune in to Channel 101 on Lime TV to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day. This news update is brought to you by... with Barbados' largest and fastest 4G network. Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today.